While a healthy dose of willpower is an essential ingredient for any dancer, willpower, like anything else, can be overdone. This is called end gaining. And it, by end gaining, it means when a dancer is so concentrated on the result he or she wishes to obtain that they bypass the process of how, how to do it, how to get where you want to go. And this can show up anywhere from the most difficult technical aspects of dancing to some of our most basic steps. And today I'd like to look at a basic bar exercise, grand battement, where end gaining poses a problem and we'll look at each position, see the problems that come up, and hopefully find a few solutions. So grand battement usually comes at the end or towards the end of a bar. And by that time, the dancer's warmed up and is, frankly, a little bit tired of bar and anxious to get into the center. So the tendency would be to think, uh, so I'm just going to kick my legs a few times and let's just get this over with and, and move on. Uh, However, Grand Battement has a lot of important lessons to, to teach us, one of which is a basic concept of any good body work, including ballet or dance or martial arts. It's the fact that the body is a psychophysical unit, and all the parts of the body will be working together to make the job easier. We're not just holding our body while we're kicking our leg as high as we can. The rest of the body is participating, even though at a first look, it isn't that evident. Let's see what happens. So now I'm going to ask the dancers to do something that's very difficult for them. I'm going to ask them to do a movement really incorrectly, so you can understand the problems that come up. So I'd like you to do three grand battements and, and do it as though you were only thinking about how high you can lift your leg and showing how supple you are and just don't think of anything else. Just do this end gaining. All you want is to get your leg up as high as possible and let's see what happens. Okay, three grand battements, five, six, seven and eight and one and two and a three and four and a five and six demi plie and tendu. So what you just saw was practically about everything that shouldn't be done. Now, one of the things that I'm always surprised to see is when I ask dancers where their hip joint is. Most people will put their hands on the side here, some people even behind. And it's really important to know that the hip joint is here. It's here in the front, in, in, in the center here. And just knowing this can really change the movement. Because what will happen, instead of, instead of letting the leg come freely from this joint, a lot of dancers thinking that the joint is here or here will push their hips forward and this will cause the whole spine to buckle under. The head compresses down, the coccyx comes forward and there's no space in the vertebra. Now, this is really important to avoid injury because if the spine is compressed, if you're landing in a ton de flesh or, or jumping this battement, your spine can't not absorb the shock. So I explained to dancers to think of the battement as coming from here, but before it even moves, we let the leg release down and then up. If we're thinking, oh, I'm going to lift it, what happens? We start gripping in the thigh muscles and trying to lift the leg, but if we're thinking down and out and from the hip joint, we get an easier, cleaner, and more healthy movement. Now for the upper body, what happens is that either the dancer will push exagger in exaggerated fashion backwards or forwards. So I'm going to ask the dancers to think of a circle, but a circle that's so big, so big that the ends practically never meet. And when we do batma in front, we want to think of it moving forward and up, forward and up. Now we can put our head here, but what we don't do is put our spine back. So this is called the primary curves of the spine. Slightly going this way, a feeling of being inside, inside one's central axis, instead of pushing out and forward. So I'm going to ask the dancers to do the batmo again, thinking of these points. Hip joint, leg moving down, and the entire body forming a circle that's so big that it practically can't be seen. Okay, ladies, we're going to do a few grand battements in front. Think of the battements coming for your, from your hips. Think of staying inside your body. You can think of the front of the spine as moving back and up. So in fifth position, five, six, seven, and eight, and from here.
two and three and four and a five and six and seven and eight. Stop. Okay, not bad, not bad. Now, look at, look at what's happening. You, we all learned when we were, were taught grand battement, faster up, slower down. But we really want to do it so well, what happens? We bring it down so slow that we end up gripping our muscles and creating bulky thighs. So you're going to do it again, and this time think of just resisting gravity a minimum, just so the leg doesn't go fluff. Right? Just let it come down. Let it come down, still lengthening the leg. So let's try it one more time. Seven and eight, now stay in the body, one and two and a three. Let it come down and up. Let it come and seven. Very nice, thank you. So let's move on to a position where end gaining can really get us into big trouble, arabesque. So what happens in arabesque, uh, it's, it's already difficult to, for most people to lift their legs from behind, so they'll struggle to get it up there, and before it's even up, uh, the problems start. So let's just take a look at uh, what shouldn't be done, and you'll do three grand battements and a demi-plie in arabesque, okay? Five, six, seven, and eight, and grand battement, and a grand battement, and a grand battement, demi plié, tendu. Well, what you just saw was pretty much everything that you shouldn't do. Did you notice the heads being thrown back at the top of the kick? Uh, this is very common because uh, the, the dancer wants to keep the body uh, in front of the torso lifted, but uh, the intention is good, but the way of doing it isn't. And this usually results in the idea of pushing the head back. What, what you have to understand is that the spine follows the head. So if I do this with my head, my spine will drop. It's sort of like being decapitated. So what we have to think about, again, is our skeleton. This is called body mapping. And just knowing that your cervical spine goes practically up to here. And as the leg comes up, we're guiding the spine forward and up by thinking of the vertical spine as remaining vertical. And this will help the spine in this gentle lifted movement. Because you want to remember that the arabesque ideally is not an L shaped. It's a smile. Another problem that happens is, is thinking uh, about the arabesque too early. What I saw the, the dancers doing just before was, they, before lifting the leg, they start to twist the hips and then lift the leg and all of these things happen here. So you want to think the batmo through slowly. It's the same as front, it's going down and back. We're not lifted yet, so there's no reason to open the hips, pinch the spine, throw the head back. You have to stay with the movement, balance the cervicals, and lastly, think of the, here, your clavicle and your shoulder blades like two horseshoes balanced on top of your torso. And this will move forward in space, but it will neither dip forward or push back. We want to keep length going in between the shoulder and the hip, and that way the leg has space enough to move and to come up without disorganizing the body. Let's see if the dancers can do this a little bit better than what you just saw. So before we start, could we do just a slow battement? Just point one, two, three, four, and lower. Let's do it in slow motion. So here we go, seven and eight, and you're thinking of keeping the cervical spine long, right? You want to lengthen between your shoulder and your hip and bringing the leg down, and you come back to vertical line, and you let your body align, and you release the tension in the front of the body. One more time, the leg is going down first and then out, making space between the shoulder and the hip, and letting the, the head guide the spine up and forward as you lower. So let's try the battements now. Three battements and demi-plié. Five, six, seven, and eight, and grand battement. And breathe out when the leg comes up and let the shoulder come forward here. And six, and plié, and again, and down and out, and up. And carefully and calmly, and breathing out, and six, and plié. Thank you, ladies. So now let's look at a la seconde. This is a position that carries a lot of emotional weight. After all, dancers have worked so hard to become flexible and supple, and for many, this is the time to show it. 
The problem, once again, is end gaining, thinking about the result instead of the process. Of course, we want the leg to come up high, strong, and turned out. We don't want the rest of the body to collapse. But thinking about what we want is not sufficient. How to do it? So when you're doing any combatment, but particularly a la seconde, avoid thinking of the, the lifted leg. Think of sending the leg down first, down and then out. And as the leg comes out, you will spiral the small toe and the heel bone. This will make the entire leg turn out and avoid the lifting of the hip. But that's not enough either because our upper body is there to give us support and strength. If our spine is pushing forward and down and our head's back, we have no support, no strength. We become a victim of the movement instead of mastering the movement. So what to do? Think of the spine as moving in, back and up. It's like this circle that I spoke about. Instead of going this way, which could be done for other movements, we're thinking this way. Down, forward, and out. You can even think of it from coming from back of the neck, down the body, out the leg, and then into second. Let's take a look at how it shouldn't be done and then see if we can obtain something a little bit better. Okay, dancers, would you be so kind as to show me how not to do grand battement à la seconde? Five, six, seven, and eight, and one, and two. And see how the shoulder goes. See how the, the head is tossing back, how the hips are lifted. Thank you very much. That was perfectly awful. <laughs> So some of these bad habits are so deeply ingrained in our bodies and our minds that despite our best efforts, uh, the habit will come up immediately. So in, before we do the batmas, or try to do them better, let's think one batma through slowly. So would you go into fifth position, please? And we'll just point the foot and slowly lift. Now wait for me. Seven and eight. Now wait, fifth position again. Now first think leg is going down, down and out. Now are you turning your small toe and your heel? You don't have to lift the leg high. Think of the front of your spine as moving back, lifting the leg, keeping the shoulder soft, just floating, just floating on top of the ocean of your torso and then the leg comes down and it moves away as you release your head up. The head is going up as the leg comes down. The entire body is participating. That looked better. So let's just try it with batmas and see if we can do three batmas a la seconde. Okay, let's do it. So five, six, seven, and eight, and one, and two, and three. Let the leg come down, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. Demi plie. Thank you. So what I hope you take home from this video is the principle that instead of thinking about what you want to obtain, you think about how to get it, the process of getting the results you want. In ballet, we're often so concerned about how it should look, and of course we want it to look beautiful, but we must think about how to get there. So be it grand battement or pirouettes or, in fact, any kind of dancing, we want to always watch our inner dialogue. The body is a psychophysical unit. What you're thinking will directly affect what's going on in your body and your movement. So we'll see you another time for more discussion about ballet technique. Uh, thank you very much.